Well, there are concerns that if Russia succeeds in Ukraine, it could threaten nearby countries such as Kosovo, which itself fought a bitter war against Russian-backed Serbian forces more than 20 years ago. Earlier, I spoke to Kosovo's president, Vyosa Osmani, who began by giving me her assessment of the latest Russian offensive in eastern Ukraine. I think what's going on is exactly what was expected because it was clear from the very beginning that Russia is not just after some parts of Ukraine, but they want to deny the entire existence of the Ukrainian nation and the Ukrainian uh, state as an independent and sovereign country. So for that reason, I don't think it's, um, it's a surprise that they are attacking all over Ukraine. And at the same time, uh, they are showing once again their hegemonic approach, but at the same time, their genocidal intentions by committing war crimes, crimes against humanities, uh, as well as genocide against innocent civilians. So this is a very critical time for the entire European continent, because the entire continent and the entire European security order is under attack by Russia, by uh, attacking Ukraine. They're endangering not just one country. So that's why I believe that all of us Europeans, all of the countries within our continent, but also beyond, knowing how much is at stake, should stand united in a strong answer towards Putin and, and Russia on the war that they are waging. And do you fear that given Russia's overwhelming superiority of firepower, despite the bravery of the Ukrainians and despite the additional weaponry which they are now getting, that Russia could well succeed in taking, if not all of Ukraine, then perhaps parts of it? Um, there is always such a risk. However, uh, that would only come true if the rest of NATO allies would not stand united, the rest of EU allies would not stand united in responding to Russia even more clearly than so far, and especially by taking away the oxygen that they use for this war, and that is the Russian economy. So I believe that the more uh, the Western allies increase the support for Ukraine and the more they also increase the sanctions towards Russia, the possibility for Russia to prevail will be smaller. At the same time, you know, as the president of a country that had to fight uh, at that time the Milosevic regime, a regime that in terms of weapons which was much stronger than us, however, we prevailed and not them, I must point out that it is the spirit of the Ukrainian people that uh, makes us confident that it shall be their prevailing spirit for freedom and democracy that will win at the very end. Uh, because after all, this is not just a war between two armies. It's a war between democracy and tyranny. It's a war between a people that is willing to give its everything to defend the freedom and democracy and the statehood that they have. And at the other side, we have a uh, hegemonic uh, tyranny uh, that is uh, seeking imperialist claims towards other countries in that region. And I would say e even beyond, because through its war in Ukraine, the entire European security order, but also the values-based system that uh, our continent and our alliances represent. So I believe we should stand stronger than so far. We should respond stronger than so far. And we should help more than so far when it comes to the help that everyone's delivering to Ukraine. Um, you mentioned there uh, the experience of your country, of Kosovo, um, which had a long conflict with Ser Serbia. Um, there you were confronted by Russian-backed forces. Just explain to people who are not familiar with the history of Kosovo, just very briefly, if you could, um, what happened there, because it was only with the help of NATO that you were able to uh, uh, repel those forces. Um, 23 years ago, uh, the people of Kosovo, just like today, the people of Ukraine, were victims of horrendous crimes that amounted to genocide, to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, in a matter of months, 13,000 civilians were killed. Thousands of women were raped. We have the highest number of children killed of any war in former Yugoslavia, if we compare it to the number of people. 
80% of the people of Kosovo were forced to flee from their homes and thousands still remain unaccounted for because they were forcibly disappeared by the Serbian army and police. Uh, later on, many massive graves were found all over Serbia, full of little kids and pregnant women and elderly who were killed and then taken through um, freezer trucks and thrown uh, in all kinds of places and buried in all kinds of massive graves around Serbia. Uh, so the amount of crimes were beyond human imagination. And while there were a few politicians and military personnel that were tried at the ICTY, in fact, most were not. Most of the criminals who committed those crimes, both in Kosovo as well as Bosnia and Herzegovina, are still, you know, walking free around Serbia who is again now showing to be a strong ally of Russia, even in the face of the critical time for the European continent. And uh, finally, in um, March 1999, NATO came to our help because the world didn't look aside when civilians were indiscriminately being killed through Milosevic's intentions to wipe us out from the face of the world. And how concerned are you that Russia could once again threaten Kosovo? There has been a continuous Russian interest to destabilize the Western Balkans and not just Kosovo, but also other countries in our region. And they have done that through concrete action, mostly through their proxy Serbia, uh, and mostly uh, trying to create tensions around the border with Kosovo, Bosnia Herzegovina, as well as creating internal turmoil and organizing coups in Montenegro. So it's mostly these three countries, but also beyond that Russia has shown a special interest of, um, of uh, destabilizing because they believe, uh, I think, that through destabilizing the Western Balkans, they actually destabilize the entire European continent. And uh, to, to some extent, that is true because the Europe holds the at peace is only possible when the Western Balkans join the European Union, a process that has been going slower than than we uh, hope for. Uh, but it is the slower this process is going, the more it, it allows for Russian malign influence to be present in our region. Uh, moreover, so would you uh, like to have Serbia, more support from NATO now? Uh, absolutely. As I've pointed out in many interviews so far, I think what's going on in Ukraine is showing that it is a security imperative to have both Kosovo and Bosnia Herzegovina join NATO as the last uh, two countries from our region that want to join NATO, because Serbia obviously doesn't want to, but at least it will help our region to increase the level of peace, stability and security. Uh, so I think at, at this point, it is very clear which are the countries that are standing in the side of democracy and human rights and against tyranny, and who are the ones that are helping the tyranny of, of Putin and Russia and the crimes that are being committed against Ukraine. Serbia right now remains the only country that has not imposed sanctions against Russia and quite the opposite. It's helping the Russian economy, uh, despite of the fact that it says that it wants to join the European Union, but it has not allowed, uh, aligned its policy with either the European Union or NATO. And so while you um, wait for the process of, of joining NATO, do you want to see more NATO protection for your country now? As you know, we, we do have a NATO presence in our country. A few thousand troops are already situated around the border with Serbia. So if Serbia would think of doing something uh, and if there is an imminent threat, uh, which nowadays is increasing, to be very frank, because uh, around the border, they have been attacking our border police officers. So we're working with our NATO partners to make sure that we stop further destabilization, which is aided and abetted by Russia, but exercised by Serbia solely in our region. So NATO is present, but they are ready to increase their presence should the need arise. And we are in daily contact with uh, our NATO pa partners to make sure that we, we make the necessary assessments whether we need to increase these troops uh, or not. But in any case, we're working uh, hard, both within our own security forces as well as with our partners to make sure that uh, there is an answer should Serbia and Russia try to destabilize our region. And just finally, I know that Kosovo has taken some Ukrainian refugees. I mean, what more help and support are you able to give to the Ukrainian people? 
Um, we have offered to take up to 5,000 refugees, which is uh, the capacities that Kosovo has right now. So there's still uh, obviously space and we would love to help and, and give back because we were refugees ourselves uh, two decades ago. And we are alive today because the democratic world opened their uh, hearts and their doors to us. Uh, at the same time, we are, uh, apart from refugees, uh, organizing a program for journalists from Ukraine who would be residing in Kosovo, but continuing their their work through through the media here. So we are trying to support both independent and professional journalism because that is so important during this time of crisis. Uh, and we have seen how important it is to tell the truth when there was a war in Kosovo. The world saw what happened to us because of brave journalists from all around the world. So we want to make sure that continues. And at the same time, we are making sure that we uh, adopt sanctions all in line with the European Union and NATO. And uh, we will continue to speak up for those who need most because we believe that although we're a small country, we have an important story to tell and an important lesson uh, so that we can see that whenever the democratic world stands together, they will always prevail against tyranny and against uh, autocratic regimes and genocidal regimes, such as the one that Putin is leading right now and Milosevic was leading back in the 90s. Well, that was Kosovo's President Vyosa Osmani speaking to me just a little earlier.